What's up everybody, it's Charles. I'm standing in what is going to be my brand new office right next to what's gonna be the brand new shop space. But uh, I gotta get out of here because the guys are here to work and they won't let me drive that little tractor. So kind of a bummer on that front. We're gonna go back inside the old shop, talk about what's going on right here. All right, so while the guys are out there working, let's talk about all this whole process. What the heck is going on? Why is my whole place all torn up. So about this time last year, I actually started looking for a new space to work out of something with more room, something that would allow flows of cars in and out a little bit easier, something where if we had a car down for two months or six months or two years, uh, it wasn't a big deal and it wasn't a problem when we wanted to do something else. Spent a lot of time searching, trying to find a warehouse, trying to find some kind of space, and I never really found a space that was ideal for what we wanted to do. Very few places really want to rent to anything automotive. If I did find one place and the guy was super rad, however, by the time you added up everything, it was going to cost a ridiculous amount of money a month. And I couldn't justify that kind of money just for a place to store my stuff. And I would have to drive there, so that has its disadvantages as well. So what we opted to do was just build in additions. Late last year, we started taking bids and interviewing contractors to try and find somebody that would work with us. Landed on a guy that's really, really awesome. Uh, they've been super, super cool and helpful through the whole process. We had one guy that looked me up and down and decided that I didn't really deserve to do business with him, I guess, or something. I don't know. He didn't get the job, needless to say. But we spent a couple of weeks planning, changing the design, figuring out what works best for the shop, what works best for my office that's going to be built, how budgeting worked, and the whole deal. And we finally decided on the, the budget, and finalized everything, got started about three weeks ago, broke ground, did all the grading, tore everything up, took down the old deck. Next step was pouring footings, then they did the cinder blocks and the bricks for this base layer of wall. Now, while I don't have a final price on what all this is going to cost, ugh, it's a lot. Uh, what I can tell you is it's about the same amount of money we were going to spend on a three-year lease at a shop space. Once we're finally done and we start moving stuff in, I'll share the full budget and as best of a breakdown as I can. As of right now, here's sort of what the shop is going to look like. It's roughly a thousand square feet of shop space. We're roughly going to come in at about 13 and a half feet floor to ceiling we opted to do six inches of concrete instead of the standard four inches of concrete that's typically done. And the reason I did that now is so that I wouldn't have to decide exactly where the lift's gonna go. I'm planning to install a two post lift, what brand and everything, I'm not quite sure yet. Odds are the lift that the Miata's on is also gonna go down there. Again, I don't have quite the structure or spacing of where everything's gonna go nailed down just yet. And to do six inches of concrete versus four inches of concrete, it wasn't really that much more. Mark my words, what I just said is gonna end up costing me a fortune. The new shop's gonna be climate controlled. It's gonna have full heat, full AC. We should be fine on the AC side of things. The heat's going to be a little bit more challenging because the floor acts as a temperature sink and it's ground contact. So we're gonna have a little bit more trouble heating the space rather than cooling it. Now you may be wondering, Charles, why didn't you do heated floor? That would have been great, but there's gonna be a lot of things that come through on this build that we're gonna to have to stop and say no more due to budget. If I had unlimited budget and that wasn't a problem, well, I'd probably be doing something a little different with the space and we would do things like a heated floor and stuff like that. So I had to make sure that I was spending money wisely on things that were a true advantage, more of a need rather than a want. Yes, it would have been awesome to do heated flooring, but not in the cards for this one. I'd rather invest that money in the climate control than simply the heated floor. And I live in a warm weather climate. It doesn't get zero degrees for six months or four months of the year. So while we may struggle a little bit with it, it's not going to be a huge deal. And there's zero climate control in this space other than two fans. So anything's gonna really be better than what we have now. I've been working through a floor drain system. Actually, I went to the place today and looked at a couple of different things. Planning to put a hose bib, in the garage so we can wash the cars in the garage. I'm thinking a T-type drain with the main drain running parallel to the garage door and about four feet coming towards the back of the garage. That way they can slope the concrete a little bit better and let all that water runoff go outside. I've maybe run into a, an inspector issue. I guess worst case scenario there, we're putting in a grease trap. Not that I wanna do that, 
I mean, it's no different than washing my car in the driveway, but you know, you got to do what they say you got to do until you can find a way around that which maybe we'll be able to find a way around that. Compared to a normal standard garage build, we're going to have double the outlets and double the lighting. I'll be running them on different circuits, at least for the lighting anyway. So we have a low draw light, think of like walking in and out and that kind of stuff. And we'll have the full sunlight LED type deal where when we're filming, the, the shop will be beautifully lit and uh, in that. And then probably some fans to keep some air circulating when it's not really worth kicking the climate control on. And uh, you know, in days like this where it's 70 degrees out, you don't need to run the air conditioning. There'll be a fridge out there, so don't worry about that one. Another thing that we've been looking at is garage doors. You know, it's a sensitive topic for me right now. We are looking at garage doors and in a manner to eliminate the tracks that go so far back. So we'll probably do a high lift door. Also with the garage door opener, I can't have it hanging right in the middle where the lift is. So we'll probably do, I think they call it a jack shaft opener where it actually mounts to the wall and just turns, uh, turns that pipe on the wall, which apparently is called the jack shaft, and that opens and closes the door. So that'll be really cool, something neat, and I've, I've never seen anybody have that. Everybody's got the old traditional style, um, but that should be pretty cool. Of course, I'll be doing some kind of epoxy flooring, still working through on that one. That's not a decision I gotta make today, right now, but that will be like the first thing once we get the occupancy permit. That'll be the first thing that gets done. It might even get done before that, because I don't want one piece of equipment in that space until we have the floor done. The main reason for that is once, once I have a toolbox in there, it's probably never gonna get done. So I wanna get that done right away rather than wait and maybe do it down the road. I'm gonna be looking at a lot of different storage solutions and I'd love your guys' opinion on this, what you have, what you've used and what you've seen. Initially what I'm thinking is cabinets, with a nice workstation at the back or maybe on the side, sort of like a built-in style, maybe some pegboard or something like that above that, and then storage cabinets above that to keep things like coolant and oil and chemicals and things like that up and out of the way, but still have them very, very organized. We'll also be doing some high-level storage. What exactly I'm gonna use for that, I don't know for sure, but I got a lot of wheels and tires that are gonna to have to be stored, so there may be some kind of rotating rack. I don't know, that's a pipe dream, right? It's probably just gonna be a rack that we put wheels and tires on. Now that we got the Miata, we got even more wheels and tires. So we got to have a really cool and a, a good way to store that stuff. Going back to the cabinets a little bit, I've looked at a handful of them. I looked at Lista, I looked at Moduline. Um, neither one of those companies will email me back, which is kind of concerning. I've talked to Sonic about their setup. Their setup's pretty awesome. So uh, we might go that route. I haven't locked that in just yet. It may be Harbor Freight toolboxes with the wheels taken off and a nice frame built in for it. Uh, Dragonfire Tools is another one. Their stuff seems really, really awesome. So if you guys have any suggestions in that space or really any of this stuff, either you've built your own garage and you, learn, you learned a lesson or you do this for a living or something like that, please drop it in the comments. I'd love for you guys to participate in this build because all this is really for all of us, right? A better space is gonna be more cars. This, the project car after this one is gonna be a big one. I'm really excited about. So we're gonna have a car down for quite some time while well, we do a bunch of things, and that's all I'm gonna say. If you've seen the black, if you've seen the car under the cover, uh, you, you probably can guess what it is, but I'll leave it at that for now. So while it's awesome to see the progress that they've made so far, and where we're at and what everything looks like, we still got a long way to go, and a lot of work to do, and a lot of decisions left to make, and I'm sure my, my budget's gonna keep ratcheting up and up and up until that final pay up me my last payment, Mr. Humble Mechanic, and, uh, and the builder is all done. Oh, another question I know you guys probably have is why didn't we make it attached, right? Why isn't it knock one of these walls out, drive right now, drive right through so you have a super duper -de duper huge garage. One of the issues is the slope of the property and the way it goes. The floor here in this shop is gonna be about two and a half or so, maybe even three feet higher than what's going on back there. So we would have had to do a couple of things. We would have had to build a ramp, we would have had to maybe do like a car lift where we would drive on it and lower the car and drive off of it. All those things take up a lot of real estate. All those things add hassle and expense. We would have had to cut the, the bricks down at the bottom to do that. I'm not saying it's never going to happen at this point, but that would have been quite a bit different of a thing. If we could have put them level, heck yeah, I would have knocked this whole back wall out and just made one huge big shop. I wouldn't have had to have an extra door. I wouldn't have had an 
have any extra driveway or anything like that. However, just the way the property works, that wasn't the best way to do it. It could have been done, but out of all the estimates that we got and all the contractors that we got, everybody said that's not the best way to do it if you don't have to have them connected. So in order to get to that space from where we're at, we'll either go outside or go inside and walk around. It's not gonna end up being that big of a deal. And again, that's something that down the road we could always do. Maybe we cut a hole for a door or something like that. I don't know, we'll figure that out when it's time to figure that out. So I'm gonna try and do these updates for you guys as often as really it's necessary. Sometimes weekly updates are gonna be very appropriate. Other times it's gonna be a week and a half or so and not a whole lot's going to be happening. We do have cameras, so I'll be able to at least capture some footage of cool stuff happening and share that with you guys as best that I can. So that's where we are as of right now. What comes next out here is gonna be one of two different things. They're either going to pour concrete, that might be concrete for the shop floor as well as the drive pad. It might just be the floor, kind of depends on the concrete guys. Or what's gonna happen is they'll actually start framing. So this is just the base of the walls here. Then it'll be sticks and drywall and everything up from there. Estimating the ceiling height to be around 13 and a half feet. The peak of the roof here is going to be the same height as the peak of the roof for the new space. So I'm not exactly sure how high that's gonna be, but it's targeting around 13 feet, which is really, really awesome. So either they're gonna pour all the concrete next or they're gonna start framing next. Either way, it's awesome to see some things finally start to happen instead of just you know dirt getting moved around. Awesome process. I'd love to know what you guys think. What am I missing? What am I forgetting? What else should I add? What's a must have for that shop space that we're gonna have? It should be super duper cool. I am so excited. Can't wait till this is done. We can move everything down here, start filming, and it is going to be fantastic. Guys, with that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you again next time. If only I had a drone that wasn't crashed.